Well, hello. And happy midday. So, welcome to everybody who tuned in now and and uh, and um, here we are on day two of the composition idea phase idea harvesting for the gratitude concert a concert for string orchestra and organ and um, my name is Martin Burial and I'm thrilled that you are here first I want to just include Anybody with a visual impairment, you are looking at uh, a white male, mid-thirties, in uh, a very pretty bright white studio. I'm sitting in front of a piano. Uh, I'm wearing a black jacket and red trousers. And behind me are reliefs um, and a bronze lion, there is a microphone, I'm sitting here, my hair is, is bleach blonde, and, um, uh, or at least was, and um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so, um, I don't want to go into too much detail about the project each time, each time I'm doing a live stream, so um, I just want to, to, to quickly do... Um, a recap of where we are and what we're going to do. Um, yesterday we had the, the first, the day one, and we we took a look at some pre-code themes, the main theme, and we developed a theme for the ox and the birds that makes the world go around. And if you saw it yesterday, we had this, I made this stupid drawing, but we're going for an idea of a wheel, and this ox is dragging its plow around, dragging this wheel around. And um, and please, if you, if you didn't see it, you can jump back and see that episode. But we're going to, to come back and refer to these themes, obviously, and, and try to stick to the core. So we have those two ideas in place, and um, we're just going to jump right into the next story. And... Um, this is a story that's both happy and sad, in that the lady who suffers from this illness, sent me her story, is living with an, a horrible illness. I can't even imagine. It's called Meniere's disease, and it's, uh, it's an illness of, of the inner ear, where your balance is completely destroyed in many cases, and you lose your hearing ability. And um, imagine being seasick all the time and trying to manage your family while having that thing. If you, that's the thing about being nauseous, right? That is both terrible and extremely lucky. It's impossible, almost impossible to remember what it feels like to be nauseous. You know, luckily, human beings forget this thing, you know. We forget what it feels like to be nauseous. And it's one of the most excruciating, debilitating feelings in the world. And imagine having that all the time, or just that it comes and goes as it pleases, you know. You can't do anything about it, but doing maybe a little bit of, of you know, seasick pills, uh, you know, which some people say isn't a good idea, or you can... Um, uh, remove, you know, that nerve that that is connected to the brain and and the ear, you know, the bad, lose your balance and, and your hearing and that sort of stuff. It's it's pretty wild. So, um, and of course, as all illnesses, they come in different, you know, uh, degrees. But I'm just imagining this thing, and 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 so this this you know, it's both sad and happy in that this. This disease must, must, must be so hard to carry around. But she, um, you know, I read her story and then, you know, she invited me to go and check out her Instagram and so I did. And here's the thing, you read through the Instagram and you see so many smiley, smiley faces, you know. She's taking every situation 
uh, that comes and is, you know, should be breaking her down and she flips it on its head and tries to see the bright side of things. And that's not something you can tell people to do. That's exactly the, the idea with this gratitude concert, that you can't tell people to be grateful. You can't read it in a book, be grateful. But you can go into a process and you can train the muscle to try and see the things that are working for you and try to be adventurous and be an explorer in how, to, how you perceive the world in spite of your limitations. And this lady is doing just that. And it's very inspiring. So the first thing I noticed when I um, was reading her story was that she had been sleeping on an air mattress. And first you think, all right, and then she, she writes, and that was a bad idea. Um, because as you imagine, you know, that's quite wobbly. And so she probably hadn't been sleeping much. She, she'd been on, on the ocean, you know, that night. But here's the thing, you know, when you're attacked with this sort of thing, extreme fatigue and you're, you're stressed out and these things are happening to you that very few people can see in this case. And, you know, and she, and then she wrote, you know, it was either the air mattress or it was the stairs, you know. She had to choose. Do I sleep on the air mattress or do I take the stairs up and down to, to lie in a more, you know, stable, you know, bed? And, you know, sometimes that just isn't up to you and you just need to, to take what you can get. And in this case, it was an air mattress and it completely wiped her out, right? Because she was lying there with no sense of balance in, on an ocean and she had woke up nauseous and fatigued and, and broken in so many ways and she just wanted to cry and um, I guess yeah and that was the story that she sent me and so and so at the same time she's turning this on its head and trying to look at the fun fun side of things and I think we should try and come into the composition and represent that in the story um, we need to take what we can get because you know this is you know, this is a um, pretty dark subject, chronic illness, you know, a lot of suffering. And, um, and we can't just be in the suffering, you know. People are there already all the time. We need to have a little bit of, you know, exchanging between, between those emotions. So we're going to try and take her story and find out in which, which of the, the things that she's saying can we turn into something universal? What in her story can transcend and become symbolic? And, and in, that, uh, in doing that, become accessible to everybody and not just be her story, but be a universal story of in her, uh, you know, to her, you know, resilience getting through this thing, you know, and how she does that. So the first thing, of course, I noticed, you know, she writing, you know, she had to pick the air mattresses. Either the air mattresses are going, coming up and down the stairs. And, and I imagine her in two worlds. She's, on one hand, she's in her house. She has, I believe, two daughters. And she's on top of the stairs and she's standing there. And she has to decide if she can take the flight down the stairs. And, and she... And she stands there, and the railing of the stairs becomes like standing on a ship, you know, because she's not just in her house, you know. She's also on an ocean, you know. And that's definitely, you know, when something is served to you on a silver platter, you better just take it, right? And, and this is definitely it. So she's on an ocean, but she's in her house, and she's seasick and all that sort of thing. So there's one. And I, I, I began to think, you know, maybe... And here we are starting from scratch, right? So, so one thing that I'm thinking is we have the main theme. Could we take, 
could we take that theme? Because I, I believe it's always great to, to, if you can, begin from the core, you know? And then I think today it's going to be a lot of me looking down into the piano. I'll try to articulate this thing, but we need to try and explore some things here. Just like she's exploring, how can I see this thing? How can I perceive this which is going on in my life in spite of all the agony? Uh, and so she's an explorer, you know? She explores perspectives. And um, and uh, it's obvious to see that she's you know thrill so thrilled to go into the world. And so uh, we have the theme. something that happens on the sea, you know. And maybe, maybe when the waves are high on the ocean, you know, it's not, it's not just, you know, it's not just fun and games, you know. Maybe it's too, it's such, it's, it's too much of a happy variation here. And that, and that brings me to another idea. There, there is a duality to this lady and her story. And that is her choice, you know, at trying to look at things, from, you know, from the good side. And there is also the deep sadness in there at the same time, you know. Like, like every good mother, you know, they tuck it away and they try to be as strong as possible. When you look at her Instagram posts, it's all, were my daughters happy, you know. You know, when that and that happened, but they were happy, you know, and they're going on camp and it's taken care of. Great, you know. And I can't imagine what it must be like, you know, to to not be able to jump and round and uh, around and do things um, with your children. But uh, she's not alone in that regard. And um, and so there is a sadness that she carries around. And that has to be, you know, it can't just be fun and games because, you know, she knows. And so maybe this is too happy. Right? So maybe we need to have it. reference to the ox, right? Remember we had the ox, right? And so that's nice and convenient. And I want to say another thing, and forgive me, I am going to interrupt myself a lot of times. There's so much information here that I want to share, and I'll try to limit myself, but this one is important, because um, this is the idea phase of the composition, so I'm, I'm really not trying to decide on too many keys or where everything will go. This is just harvesting ideas and making sure that I remember them. So what I do on a day like this is simply we sit down here for one or two hours, or um, however long it takes to find the idea for the day, the themes, two or three ideas, you know. And then for the rest of the day, or for in this case, because I'm I'm so busy running the pro project and, and doing all the so me stuff, it's um it'll be around around four four hours and uh, immediately after the live stream and I'll be taking those themes and I'll be moving them around and and just uh, trying to get them into the body and under my skin so that I can become intuitive with them but still stick to the core later, if that makes sense. Please, if, if you want me to elaborate on anything, please leave a comment uh, below and, and I promise you I'll get back to that. Um, so, so we have these 
you know, we love it when things, you know, remind us of something that we just heard. And it's always lovely, this big old puzzle, when, when, you, when, you, can, when you can play more stories in the same theme, around the same intervals and ideas. And um, and um, and that's why you know you know we could just stay in the same you know because the perspective of the ox you know the story there comes from a man whose wife and daughter are sick with me right and we we come up with this theme that represents the turning of the wheel and the marching on um, and um, and his marching on relentless marching and and we want to take the stories and have them remind us of each other whenever there's a uh, something that's common between them there's a lot of common common ground yeah so this is definitely one you know uh, representing uh, the mother's sadness of her own uh, inability to be what she would want to be for her children and at the same time her resilience marching on right so right and we had we had that interval that we also that we chose yesterday because it gives us a little bit of a sense of 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 um, of a fairy tale you know a variation of the main theme and that's great that's great okay let's try and see if we can move on I was talking yesterday and I'm going to touch on that a couple of times the calibration of the intervals Be before I get to work on on uh, on composing I I make sure that my relationship subjective relationship to the intervals is established so so I, I sit down and I run through the intervals and and decide what this means to me now, in this in this time. And I move up, and you can go back to the chapter called Calibrating Intervals in, in day one, and, and you can see much more about it. I want I don't want to take up too much of your time with that stuff, but but so in my mind I I have I have calibrated an intuition with the intervals, and it makes it easy for me whenever I I come. So let's say. I want to, let's say we have this, this motif, right? And let's say that I want it to come up from this, this interval up here. And, and let's say that I want it to, to, um, to establish, you know, maybe she comes up to a wave, you know, the height of the wave. And she wants, and she sort of, and she can, she, she can, she can see out on the ocean, look out on the ocean, and she gains some aspect of stability, for instance, you know. And so, that could be a stable, you know, fifth of stable interval. So she, she comes up there, and she, she gets a moment of clarity where she can see, you know, the entire ocean. So, so we could, we could represent, no, not, not with the third, but re represent that with the fifth, right? And, and this interval, right? You can sense the clarity, as opposed to, right, or, you know, 
There is a stability there, so we could come up and say. And she's on the top of the wave, and she sees out, and you know, she can see the ocean. It's there, and then. children, you know, in the middle of the thing. basically a variation of the theme. We know that we have these places to go now. And then we want to come up on the wave and we want to see it from the outside. There, and the world is beautiful. And then it tumbles down. another feeling that uh, and sorry for I'm just going sometimes I'll just go out on a on a limb you know but forgive me for, for doing that the but it's to sort it's to sort of explore you know um, the potential of the thing because um, there are two worlds here three worlds I think you know there is her in her house you know and the immediate world you know and and she's and also when she's out um, you know, she can't really go to the cinema that easy because of the darkness and all the people and the sounds, and she'll get nauseous and, 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 you know, and that isolation that you have this thing going on on the inside, you know, just try to remember the last time you were nauseous, right? And, um, and you're just trying to hold it together while you're, you're in the world. And that isolation that so many people with chronic illnesses experience is, 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 it's like a, a small world, you know, that's because you have to focus on on keeping yourself steady all the time, right? And where to next, and you have to calibrate that and manage that all the time, and that's what drains a lot of people, right? And um, and then there is the big world, you know, the big perspective, the ocean that she's in, the big boat, you know, and that relates and. To, to every other person on the planet who is experiencing the same thing, both good and bad, you know, the symptoms, but also her resilience, right? And, and she's, a, she's a captain on a boat now. We just decided that, you know, she's a captain on a boat and she's fearless, you know, and she is breaking into the waves and she has a family and she needs to make sure they get to the other side of the ocean safely. So there is something here that makes me want to, to, to make her travel through, you know, um, back and forth between the two worlds. So you have the small world, her house, her immediate family, 
a way of handling that sort of thing. And then you have the big world, and she's navigating that like a captain, right? And she has to pull her family through that. And, and so we can, you know, one idea could be to, to try and, and whenever we talk about, you know, her story, then we make sure that we have um, small parts of the, the orchestra, um, small sections of the strings represent um, an intimate world. So many ways to do that. We're not going to decide that now. Uh, but I'm just saying a lot of this could be in the, in the orchestration. You know? And so as for the idea phase, what I'm um, concerned about now is simply, can it translate? Can, can the idea that we have for her and her story, will it work in, in, in the small um, in the small world and in the big world. And that was what I just tried to experiment with here, yeah, going down and hammering away at the, at the, at the, at the keys. Um, so, so we want to see, but, and here is the thing, I feel like in the middle of these things, there's something that we need to get to, which is, which is, you know, um, no, we'll get to that. First of all, we have, you know, This is too, when it becomes intimate, that's funny. When we play this silently, then it becomes too idyllic in a way. Because that's not how she experiences it, you know? It's, uh, it's, um, it's much harder to hold on to. So how can we do that? How can we make this harder to hold on to? Maybe something taking it out of balance somewhere else. So we have one, 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 one element could be doing. And what if we went up, did it in reverse? out of the merry mood. We do this in the big world. Then it's much easier to accept, you know, because the waves can be beautiful but terrifying at the same time, right? But when we're up here in the intimate sphere, we're not allowed to be as idyllic. Maybe that's the thing we were at before that came out. a new dissonance you know we never introduced you know c sharp when we did the ox right but here maybe it has a role
Yeah, I think we need to... Okay, so in her little world, okay, what could inform us? What happens there? She's more immediately connected to her daughters and her family and the sadness. So that gives me a, an idea that when we are in the small world, the intimate world, we need to have more access to the sadness. Right, because in the big world, you, you can be courageous, you know. With your daughters, you want to be there, you're there in the family space, you can't do what you wanted to do. The sadness enters, right? And, and you put on a mask to look more happy than you are. But when you go out into the world, you know, there are lions and tigers and waves and things to fight that you can touch and feel. And um, the, the sadness, maybe that's replaced with courage. So the more intimate we get with her story, the more, the more of the sadness we need to, to have coexist with it. And the more we go into the big, the big waves, we need to um, induce the courage and the forward motion, you know, going through the waves, okay? So we're here in the intimate sphere and we're jumping up. Let's just test out some intervals here. And see how we feel about them. This is not a spy thriller, so I think we're going to have to leave that out. So this is... You know, it's too stable. So this could come after, but not in a run, you know, we can't do... Then it becomes happy, but in this, in this um, context... It's almost as if she's looking out of the windows now, if we introduce that third. You know, because it's sort of, it neutralizes the mood a little bit, and it's like she's looking up. Imagine that. So, she's here. out for a moment there is a world out there okay so she's reminded of the world let's do something further down that represents the world out my children need to go into the world you know eventually I need to keep looking out I can't just be in my head going to protect them and be there for them. Okay. We have something here. So. Maybe come up and look out on the ocean.
another thing. She <laughs> far down in her Instagram posts you, you see one thing that that um, you know a lot of people suffering from chronic illness will feel an experience and that is you know just for one day to be without this thing. And we need to see if we can do that. And now we've come around, we have the intimate, some of the intimate ideas and themes. We know that relates to her family and navigating that there is also a sadness there. And then we found a way to make her look out the window into the big world. That's equally terrifying as it is wonderful and she wants to explore it and she wants her kids to go into it. And, and that transports us into the main theme, but in a more waltzy sort of And And those things, we got those in place, but then she has a dream. You know, she has this dream for herself, you know. And, and that is to, just for a moment to be, to be free from this thing and experience balance. And there is only one way to experience balance, maybe. And, you know, that is the octave. So, we need to try and give her that.
generous balance. into that completely out of we never we never placed the root in B and sort of menace wanting to come in there. Hmm. All right. So I'm sorry for taking such a sinister turn on this thing. This is life after all. So, hmm. Right. Okay. So that was a that was a lot of ideas for this story actually. We have we have the the small world themes and the sadness, and we have the big world that now carries the courage in there. And we've sort of, in speaking of the tonality of the thing, we've also expanded and started to move, at least in small um, half tones, away from the main theme and started exploring the uh, the uh, adjacent uh, tones to see if to see what, what exists there, you know. And we had a menacing low B come in. And, you know, and all I'm thinking now is a shame that or maybe we can have the basses tuned down to a low B, I don't know. But we have that, the small world and the big world. And we have the sadness in the intimate world
she could come up on the wave and look out for a moment. And then she could look out of the window and there she sees the world and that brings us in to the big world. is introduced we can come back and now we're allowed to play the main theme in an intimate setting because now it is idyllic now the waves are just beautiful you're not nauseous anymore you can just look at the beauty of the wave you can just be in the living room with your daughters on an air mattress and you're not getting nauseous you are just there with them looking at them watching tv talking playing with their things, you know. And um, that's beautiful. That's beautiful in the way that, that we have that opportunity. We introduce some balance. You know. And now we're allowed to see the waves without feeling like crap. Maybe not even with our fairy tale interval. Maybe just. Maybe on up, looking at the children. Imagining their adventures. Obviously, there is a lot we can do to, to enhance the mood and the wavy thing when we come to orchestrating and, and sending this out to the different string sections. But that will be for that time. For now, this is just harvesting ideas. And, and, and there, is a one, there is one last thing that this story um, reminded me of. And, and that is to, just to take it back to the experience of of, of fighting chronic illness and the, the, the element of, of invisibility, because the little world is also the invisible world, right? That which goes on in her head, her gaze, and, and how she manages that which is most dear to her immediately. And then there is the big world, and she goes into the big world, sort of, let's imagine that, and, and this is not to uh, diminish her experience at all, it's just to create a, a, a symbolic gesture that could, could have us, uh, some symbolic, um, just an anchor to hold on to in the story. And, and we could imagine that her inner world is like a snow globe. You know, it's literally on the inside. It's her experience. And she goes into the big world and she needs, now she needs to carry this snow globe with her. Maybe she carries it, you know like this, and it's a very fragile snow globe, you know. And she goes into the world, and and she sees this snow globe, but no one else does. Not unless she is using, uh, um, you know, what, what do you call that, like the relator, the, you know, so you can walk, it has like wheels, and you can use that. Walk with a cane, or 
or something else, you know, like that. And unless she's doing that, no one can see it. No one can see that snow globe. And and um, and there is an element in that. There is something where we we and we'll just save this for later. But it tells me that in the big world, the big world themes. <laughs> take the snow globe and tr introduce it you know I don't have enough hands and I'm a bad enough piano player at, to begin with so we need to sneak in another hand I know in the storm of the big world we need to introduce the small snow globe you know her immediate ex experience she's also talking about how you know all she needs sometimes in the world is just if people only knew to give her a couple of more minutes to do that thing, you know, that that the tempo has to be a little bit different. And in some senses, it needs to be quicker. You know, there are all these things. And one of the biggest things, I think, when I read through it, I, I read part of her story was how she, for the first time, experienced to go in and get you know, this rollator that she could, um, that could help her walk and the first time and she's, you know, she's um, been in there before uh, because of her, her job and, and, and she, um, and this is the first time she get, goes in there and I recall the first time I uh, was driving my girlfriend through the airport in a wheelchair uh, and it's a very, very, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it really, it's a really wild experience. You experience immediately how the world changes around you. Um, you become something else, and you and people are acting extremely. You're both. It's happy and sad. You know. I was so. I was. My eyes were in tears when we got to the gate in the airport because people were so friendly, coming up to me. People I don't know coming up and telling us how brave we were and stuff like that. They didn't know us. They just felt they had to reach out and say that thing. And that's all beautiful, but at the same time, you feel like you're sort of boxed in and you definitely experience a stigma, you know, uh, like, um, you know, um, I was just talking to, 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 to my partner about this, right? And, and we're talking about the gray areas, right? That, you know, if I decided to wear a skirt, you know, people would immediately think that this is one of her points, you know, people would immediately think that they should you know, engage me as the complete other, like female, instead of just, it's just me with a skirt. Maybe it's something in between, you know, you don't know. And, um, and it's the same thing. Society is extremely either or, you know, it likes boxing things, which is why we need to talk about these things. Because when we talk about them, we get out of the box and we get the nuance, right? And I don't want to preach to the choir, you know, but that's how it is. And, and, um, and you, um, you know, these things happen. And so, so this is one of the hard things for a lot of people with, with chronic illnesses, right? Is that they, we call it an invisible illness. And this is one of her points as well. That, but, you know, but they're really not. If, they're, if, 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 there's, if people are severely ill with ME or sclerosis, for instance, they're just invisible illnesses because you don't see them in the street. They can't go out. They're literally in their houses, a lot of them bedridden. And, and a lot of the stigma that is in the world prevents these people from going into the world. You know, this is one of her points. When we were in Copenhagen and she was out doing these things, when she started getting ill, her career was really, you know, really starting to go well, playing concerts with wonderful, amazing artists and and um, everything was, was going great, but she was getting more and more ill. And there, there was such a stigma around it that she wouldn't think for a second, hey, what if I got a wheelchair? Then I could go to that reception and I could go and do that, go and, and hone my career. If I went in a wheelchair or I had a cane, then I would be able to go on stage and do that performance for 45 minutes, you know. But she didn't allow herself to do that because of the stigma. And this is the same for thousands of people in Denmark alone and millions of people worldwide, of course. Because of the stigma, you don't go out in your wheelchair. Because what will people think when you are at the museum and someone is rolling you around 
and then when you go your next round, you see that same person in the wheelchair, but now that person gets out of the wheelchair and starts walking around, you know, because that was why she was in a wheelchair, so she could walk around for half an hour, and that will be the only half hour for the next three days, but you don't know that, so because of the stigma, you think that might be an imposter of sorts, or, you know, you have a sort of imposter syndrome with people with chronic illness, right? Because they believe that people will see them, see them, or potentially see them as imposters. If you only use your wheelchair for a little bit in the supermarket, but you walk the rest of the way, and this is why we need to, to talk about these things, and um, and this is true for all illnesses that require aids, right? That that. Um, just because people don't wear them or use them all the time, it doesn't mean they're not needed. And we need that nuance in society. Right? So he pops out of a wheelchair and sits down in it in front of everyone. You know? And he rolls into the restaurant. And now people think he only did that to get to the front of the line. But that's not the case. Okay? In the world, there are always rotten apples. But what is the system that we're creating where we, where we have other people who don't know people judge these people? This is true in government. It's true in insurance companies. We don't trust each other very much. This is why this thing is happening. And then when we talk about it, we create that trust. Isn't that right? So that was just a little bit of a rant because I just had the conversation with my wonderful partner. And it relates to this story. So, that's good. I think we're here for today. And um, this was it. Let's look at, you know, the stupid drawing, you know. Now, where, where can we place, you know, maybe we should, we don't have to place people in this story, but you know, if we're, we have this story, the lady with Meneas, and we have the wheel, we have the ox, and we have the birds, the ox is dragging the plow. We have the main theme, which might be an anchor, maybe just symbolic, and then we want to save the middle, and see what can show up in there, maybe the ocean she experiences is simply around the edge of things. So here we have the ocean and that gives us a feeling, you know, we could, maybe something could happen in here that's an intimate place. Maybe these are separated by dams. I don't know. So the ox makes this whole thing go around. Things relate to the ox. Things relate to the anchor. We have the ocean, and here uh, she sails. Captain Ohoy with her family behind, nauseated and fatigued, and wondering if she can go on and keep on doing this thing. I think she can. And that's it for today. Now I'll turn off the live stream and I will go ahead and absorb the ideas that we did today and get them into the body. And then tomorrow we're going to engage yet another story. Hope to see you all then. Please, everybody, leave comments if you have questions and if you have anything that you feel could increase this project's inclusion um, for... Um, for people with disabilities or illnesses, then, then please let me know, and I will try to do whatever I can. So thank you so much for showing up, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>